If you guys want to be a flight attendant, get ready because this is going to be your chance. Hi guys, I'm Stella, a Washington DC based flight attendant. I travel the world and I take you with me here on my YouTube channel. I kind of feel like travel went from like 50 or so percent to like a thousand and it's just like whoop, everything has just rubbed up. So this means that airlines, all the major airlines, Delta, United, American Airlines, Southwest, JetBlue, all of the big airlines are going to start hiring very soon. The reason that I know that airlines are gonna be hiring soon is because I'm, I'm involved in a lot of flight attendant Facebook groups and a lot of flight attender, flight attendant instructor positions have been posted. So if they are hiring flight attendant instructors at a lot of the major airlines, that means that soon afterwards, flight attendant positions will also be open. If you've ever thought about being a flight attendant, if even if you really haven't thought about being a flight attendant, but you really don't know what you wanna do, be a flight attendant. <laughs> I am telling you, I had no idea I wanted to be a flight attendant. I had no I, no desire really to be a flight attendant. I'm slightly afraid of heights and I just thought like, what do flight attendants do all day? Like I'm bored on, on air flights, on, on flights. Like what are, they've gotta be really bored. It has truly been the best job that I never knew that I wanted and I got and I'm just like, what? This is amazing. I don't want to be anything else but a flight attendant. I'm over here like getting heated. I just, I get so excited when I'm talking about being a flight attendant or letting people know about like, oh, you, you're thinking about being a flight attendant or, or you don't know what you want to do. Be a flight attendant. Like, are you kidding me? Like, yes, do it. Like, do it. Definitely right now you want to get your resume started. You want to make sure your resume is on point. You've got all the customer service experience that you've ever, if you worked at a lemonade stand, that's providing customer service experience. So make sure that is on your resume. Any type of customer experience, any type of job that you're dealing with customers, make sure that you really put that front and center on your resume because that is your job as a flight attendant. You are so much involved with customers, with passengers. Anytime you have that flight attendant uniform on, if you're walking in the parking lot, the hotel that you're laying over at, inside the airports or on the airplanes, people will look to you for guidance. They will look to you and say, oh, hey, um, do you know where this gate is? I can't find it. It's like, oh yeah, sure, here, let's look at the kiosk and let's like find it for you or let's look at the airport map or ooh, you're gonna need to take the sky train to get over to that gate. You're not at the right gate, hurry up, go. Make sure you get over there. So anything on your resume with customer service experience is going to float you to the top when recruiters and you know the, the computer system is looking at your resume and it sees customer service, customer service, like yes, you are going to get a call back. If you don't have any customer service experience, if you're fresh out of college or you or you know you just haven't had any jobs in customer service, I would definitely recommend to take this time now and go get a job in customer service because that is really going to help you when you're applying. Also right now, regional airlines are hiring. So I work at a mainline airline. So that means I fly like all over the United States and I fly internationally. A regional airline, you really are just going to stay around that region. So if you're a West Coast regional flight attendant, you're going to fly mainly around the West Coast and on that side of America. And is if you're East Coast, it's the same thing. You're going to kind of fly around the East Coast. You're not really going to go too much east to west coast and west coast to east coast. So that's all that means with being a regional flight attendant and the planes are just a little bit smaller, but you're still a flight attendant. You're still getting all that flight attendant experience. You're still getting to go to really cool places, just more closer to where your home base is. If you're applying for a mainline airline, one of the big ones, and you're already a regional flight attendant, you're already gonna float to the top also because it's like you are, the recruiters are gonna look at your resume and say like, oh, 
Oh, this person's already a flight attendant. They're already working at this airline. They've been here. They already know the lifestyle of a flight attendant because being a flight attendant truly is a lifestyle. It is completely different than any job you, you'll you ever have. It's, it's, it's a whole different realm. It's a whole different language. You, you learn all the reserve and you know, all these acronyms and what's your line month and how many legs are you flying this, this month? You're also going to want to make sure that you are checking the websites. You are checking, it's tedious. It is so tedious, but I would check the websites every single day. When I was applying to be a flight attendant, I made a spreadsheet on Excel. I made a spreadsheet. I listed all the airlines that I wanted to work for. And then I put a column next to it. Are they hiring? So some of the airlines, yes, hiring, yes, hiring, not hiring, hiring closed, gonna open in a few months. So I knew if that airline was hiring and then the next, did I apply? So yes, I applied. And what step am I on? Have I had the initial phone call interview? Have I had a video interview? Have I had a face-to-face? -face? Have I been rejected? Yes, I've been <laughs> rejected. Uh, so I just made this whole spreadsheet that really kept me organized and let me know, and I would update it. So if I checked, you know, on the, on February 2nd, whatever year it was, if I checked on that day, I updated it. Like this is the last day that I checked for, you know, Delta Airlines or American Airlines or whoever I was applying for. I had a very organized spreadsheet and I definitely recommend for you guys to do that as well. And it doesn't need to be on an Excel spreadsheet. I'm, I'm not like very good at Excel, but that's just what I used. It just really helps you keep track. I definitely say apply to as many airlines as you possibly can. Don't just apply for the one dream airline that you think you wanna work for. No, apply for all of them because every time, every time you go for an interview, you are gaining experience. And even if you don't get hired at your first or second or third or fourth airline that you apply for, keep applying because every time you're gonna make it to a different step and you're going to learn from that. I always say you learn so much in failures. Trust me, just keep applying. I applied to three airlines. I was rejected from two airlines and one of the airlines, I made it all the way to the end. I did the phone interview, the video interview, the another phone interview, I think, I don't know, a face-to-face -face interview. And on that face-to-face -face interview, I passed everything and they sent me to the HR person, the very last person who made the final decision like she's a yes or she's a no and I knew the moment I started that interview with that HR person it it was very awkward it wasn't comfortable I I just did not click I knew it I said you know my mom told me from a very young age not everybody is going to like you Unfortunately, that HR person was one of those people who didn't like me. So I was not offered the job and I was crushed. I was just so defeated. I was crying in the car. I was on the phone with my mom. Don't give up. Like, honestly, don't give up. Had I just given up at that interview and been like, I'm, I'm not cut out to be a flight attendant. I can't do this. It would have ended right there. It would have been done. It would have ended and I would have not been a flight attendant, but luckily that interview taught me so much that for my next interview with the airline that I actually got hired at, I like rocked it. I knew. And when I went into that HR interview, I was like, <laughs> I was like so nervous. Like, hi, I'm Stella. Nice to meet you. Like, <laughs> hopefully you're one of the people that does like me so I could tell my mom that I got the job. Definitely nerve wracking. And I wouldn't take it personal because you know, sometimes it's just, you're not gonna click with that last HR person and you just gotta keep, you gotta keep going. Don't give up. Get your resume in order, get your customer service experience, you know, front and center on that resume, or if you don't have any, get out there and get a job where you're gonna be learning some customer service, uh, where you're gonna be gaining that customer ex service experience. Regional airlines and private jet airlines right now are definitely hiring. So definitely think about applying for those. Make a spreadsheet, make a spreadsheet, be organized, and don't just apply to one airline. Apply to as many airlines as you possibly can. Keep going on interviews, keep trying. Definitely watch as many flight attendant YouTubers and social media people as you possibly can if you really do want to do the job 
do the job because you're gonna get you're just gonna get a lot of information and you're really gonna get and understand the lifestyle just did a lipstick check and realized I had lipstick on my teeth so hopefully that didn't show up too much my attendants wear a lot of red lipstick and it's always on our teeth and if we take a bite of food it's always on whatever we're eating so it's nothing new so if i have lipstick on my teeth leave a comment let me know like hey stella maybe wipe your teeth a little bit more often in between talking because you got lipstick on it the whole time i get so excited when i'm talking about like flight attendant stuff and i just like ah! I'm just like telling you like everything and i'm not even thinking about lipstick or if my hair is like off or if it's like doing something funky. With every job, there are pros and there are cons. It's not all like, this is the most amazing thing ever. It is amazing. It is so much fun to be a flight attendant, but there are definitely some cons. So let's go over some of my absolute top best things about being a flight attendant. And this is gonna make you want to like stop the video and go apply right now to be a flight attendant. And then I'm also gonna go over some of the like the worst things about being a flight attendant, like literally just the worst things about the job, especially at the beginning. So number one pro is that you will get to travel the world. I mean, that's just a given when like, why do you want to be a flight attendant? To travel the world, to see Rome, to see London, to see, you know, Rio de Janeiro, to go everywhere, to travel the world. And when you become a flight attendant, you truly will get to travel everywhere to see the most random things that you like never even thought that you wanted to see, you will see them. Some of my best layovers are in just random towns that I was like, Denver? What, what am I doing in Denver? Had the most amazing time. Leads right into number two, best thing about being a flight attendant is that your airfare is free. I mean, depending on which airline you work for, your airfare is mostly 100% free, almost free, very little price that you have to pay. For our airline, we do have to pay taxes, but that's it. And it's, it's tiny and it, I can travel the world for free if a first class seat is available. Guess what? I get a first class seat. Doesn't matter if I'm going international or if I'm just flying domestic. It's free. I I'm always grateful for whatever seat I get because I know that it's just a perk of the job and that I get to, I, I get to go to wherever I need to go for free. I live in DC now, but I lived in New York for a, the last like five and a half years. And I constantly flew back and forth to LA because all my family is there. That's definitely one of the best things about being a flight attendant is that you will get air travel for free and then also you get to travel just in general for your job for free as well and you get paid for it. Number three, it is a very stress-free job. You don't have any type of deadlines with this job. You don't have uh, you know, presentations that need to be done on you know, bright and early Monday morning. You don't take any of your work home with you. Once you work your flights for that day, most of the time you just, you work them and once that door is closed and you step off the plane, you forget that flight altogether. You don't have to think about that flight again. You don't have to think about your flights the next day. You don't know what's gonna happen, but you don't have to stress about it. If you have an incident on the plane, like a medical emergency or some type of disturbance or emergency on the plane, you will have to write a report, but it's relatively stress-free. You just kind of write your report. You might have to speak with your manager, but it's, it's not like you're, you're like, oh, I'm so stressed out about this. Like, it's just, you don't take your work home with you at all. I love that. Once I get home, I'm not thinking about my job at all, unless I have like a trip that I need to trade. I'm like, oh, I'm stressed out about trading this trip or dropping this trip. That's really the only stress. But for the most part, it, it's a very stress-free job. Love just getting to enjoy my job and not being stressed out about my job. Number four, best thing about being a flight attendant is you can make your schedule whatever you want. N not the first year. The first year of being a flight attendant is really hard because you're super, super junior. But after you have at least one year or two years of seniority, you can really make your schedule whatever you want. You can fly a ton of hours or you can fly very low time hours. If you need certain days off of the week off, you can definitely 
almost always get those days off. If you do yoga, you know, like every Monday and Wednesday, you can bid your schedule so that you have those days off and you can go to your yoga class or if you have school or if you even have another job. A lot of flight attendants have other jobs on the side. So you can definitely manipulate your schedule and make it the way you want to make it. Number five, you will never work the same day twice. Most of the time you won't even work with the same crew. It's not like you go in every day and you know, a nine to five with the same desk, the same cubicle, the same, you know, coworkers. It's always different. Your passengers are different. Your planes are different. Your different equipment, uh, different layovers, different destinations, different crews, different pilots, different hotels that you stay at. I fly a lot to Miami and I feel like every time I go to Miami, it's different because we're always in a different hotel. The hotels are changing frequently. So it's always like I'm going somewhere different every time. Even the hotel locations change. So sometimes we're in one location and then sometimes the next time the hotel is moved to a different different location. So you're staying in different parts of the city. It's just, it's, it's never the same. Like, so you, you're never going to get bored of being a flight attendant. Every single flight is different. Every single month schedule that you have is different. It just, everything is always changing. Lots of variety and lots of excitement and no boredom really. <laughs> One of the best things I think about being a flight attendant, once you become a flight attendant and you've been a flight attendant for several years, is you will see that you gain so much independence. I mean, before I became a flight attendant, I would have never thought that I could explore an international destination by myself. I never thought that I would go to dinner on a Friday night by myself. Me first get hired, you wanna do everything with your crew. You're like, who wants to go hang out with me? Who wants to go do this? Like, you want to just go with somebody. But then after a few years, you're just like, hey, I'm going here. If anybody wants to come, you're more than welcome. If not, like, I'll see you guys tomorrow at pickup. You just start getting so much independence and it's it's trickled over into just like my everyday life. Like, I'm always like, I can do that. I can do that. I'm strong. I'm capable. I'm independent. Like, I can do that myself. I don't need help. I definitely attribute that to being a flight attendant and just being at all these different areas, all these different places, and just being okay with going out by myself and doing things by myself and just experiencing things with just me. <laughs> just like, hey, look, me and every, and me and the world. Now let's get to some of these cons. <laughs> you know, with every job, there's good and there's bad. So these truly are like my top cons, worst things about being a flight attendant. Take these into consideration when you are applying to be a flight attendant. Okay, number one, you don't become a flight attendant to be rich. You are not going to make a lot of money as a flight attendant. The way the pay scale works, it's a set pay scale. So if you are a first year flight attendant, you will make this amount. This is how much you're gonna make. Once you hit two years, you're gonna make this three years, four years, five years, and then it caps out at, um, I think with my company, it caps out at like 13 years. It's, it's constantly changing and the pay is also changing because if, if one major airline changes the pay scale, all the other airlines will follow. So if one airline decides like, hey, we're gonna pay our flight attendants this, then it's like, oh, wait now, wait now, now we wanna be paid that. It's not a lot, it's not like a ton of money. We don't work as many hours as as like a normal nine to five job where you work 40 hours a week. For us, working 40 hours could be 40 hours for the whole month. It really factors in to not making so much because if I only worked 40 hours that month, even, that, even though I might be making a competitive salary, like I don't know, $30 an hour, uh, the person who worked 40 hours for all four weeks is definitely gonna make a lot more money than I am if I only worked 40 hours for the whole month. You become a flight attendant for the benefits and, and other things, not to be a high paying job. So that leads right into number two is that we don't actually get paid until the forward boarding door is completely shut. Getting to and from the airport you won't get paid for, which most jobs you don't get paid, you know, commuting to, to work, so that's fine. Finding parking at a at an airport is a lot harder than maybe finding parking at a restaurant or a corporate job where you just park and you know, you walked into the building, go up the elevator and you're there. Uh, finding parking at the airports is a little bit harder, so none of that is factored in. 
And then when you sign in and you get to the airport, you're not getting paid when you sign in or walking through, going through security, walking to your gate, getting on the plane, checking all your emergency equipment, uh, making sure the flight is, the airplane is ready to go to receive passengers and getting a crew briefing from like the head flight attendant or even the pilots will brief. You're not getting paid for any of that. And then when the passengers come onto the plane and they're boarding and you're getting them waters, you're taking their trash, you're greeting them at the front door, you're helping them with their luggage, you're helping them with their seats. If you don't get paid until that forward door is shut and then you will start getting paid. And then when that door opens, you get like, I think, depending on what airline you work for, you get a few minutes after the forward boarding door is open for deplaning, you get paid a little bit for that. It's, it's a con of being a flight attendant and it's definitely something to consider that you aren't getting paid that much and then you're not getting paid that much for your time, but you will get to experience these really cool things. Kind of just like what matters more to you. So something to consider. Number three is that your first year with most airlines now, it didn't used to be most airlines, but now I'm seeing the trend that your first year you are straight reserve. And so what reserve is, is it's basically being on call. You'll have your days off for the month and then you'll have your reserve days where you are good to the company and you can work if they call you, you gotta go to work. On those days that you're on reserve, on call, it's very hard to plan. It's very hard to go to that yoga class because it's like, well, what if crew scheduling calls me and you have to leave in the middle of your class or you don't get the phone call? You have to answer that phone call or call them back within a, a, a certain amount of time. For our airline, it's 15 minutes. So if I'm at a movie, or a, or a workout class and I don't get the call and then I, I check it after like 30 minutes, it's considered a missed trip and I have missed that, that work assignment. Reserve is hard. I've talked about reserve on so many vlogs. It's stressful, it's hard, and most new hires will go straight reserve for one year, which is it's very difficult, but it, it can be done. And once you've served your time, you're, you're done with it. And well, you're not done with it completely because now for me, even though I'm six years in to being a flight attendant, I do reserve every fourth month. And it's still stressful and it's still hard. Sometimes I can hold it off, but sometimes I can't and I have to do reserve and it's, it's not my favorite thing. You will do that probably for the first year of your flight attendant career. Number four, seniority is everything. So most flight attendants, once you get hired with one company, you won't see that flight attendant jump to another company or you get hired at Delta and you're like, oh, I don't like Delta. I'm gonna go work at Southwest or JetBlue or American. You're not really gonna see that because once you get hired at a company, you start building your seniority. And so you start off at like a really high seniority and the Goal is to get to as low of a number as you possibly can. My company, I think we have like, like 28,000 flight attendants and I think I'm seniority 20,000 and something. But I mean, it's still like, oh my gosh, I'm seniority 20,000. I'm still glad I'm not like seniority 28,000. Like I can still hold a pretty good line, pretty good trips, but seniority is everything. Every year you'll build your seniority with people retiring, flight attendants retiring who are more senior to you and then flight attendants who are being hired under you and your seniority will start, well, it'll actually, it'll start going down and that's what you want it to do. You don't want it to go up, you want it to go down. Basically get a better schedule, you'll get better trips with your seniority and if you've got good trips, you'll be able to trade them more. So seniority is everything and unfortunately, when you first start out as a flight attendant, you don't have any. You're at the top of the seniority list, not where you wanna be. The more time you're at your airline, your seniority will go down and things will get better. The last thing, the last con or the worst thing about being a flight attendant is jet lag. And it is so real. It is so real. Uh, you really get it more when you fly international flights. Typically we leave on the international flights in the early afternoon or early evening. And then we get to a destination in the morning and you're like, okay, I'm in London at 7 a.m. I always need to take a nap. I cannot just hit the ground running and go. I need to take a little bit of a nap, but then 
you're, you're so off your sleep schedule that you take a little nap, you wake up, you're super groggily, but you're like, okay, I want to go to my favorite grocery store. I want to go to my favorite museum. Like I want to go do things. And I'm here in this amazing international location. And then when you go to come home from the international trip, you're a little discombobulated. So you kind of really got to like be on it for that flight home. Jet lag's definitely a huge thing with being a flight attendant. And even if you fly like west coast to east coast or vice versa, you're gonna be thrown off. And also you could have a trip that, like I know for me, I had randomly last month, I had like a bunch of early morning sign-in trips. And then I had a bunch of late trips, like right after that. So I got my, my like sleep schedule got on, okay, get to bed at nine, 10 o'clock at night, wake up at 4 a.m., go work these flights. And then like I immediately had to switch and like, okay, go to bed, try to go to bed at like midnight because now I've got these night flights that get in at like 1 a.m and then you know doing the same thing for the next few days sometimes it's just hard to get on like a really good sleep schedule so sleep deprivation and jet lag are definitely huge things with being a flight attendant and and you're just kind of you're just kind of like all over the place and again with seniority you'll be able to get a more consistent schedule so definitely something to make sure that you're aware of if especially if you're one of those people who are like i need to get to bed at this time every single night and this is my schedule like no that's gonna be completely thrown off let's get the hair back up to the front let's make sure we don't have any lipstick on our teeth this is super exciting. I'm excited for you guys. If you guys have any questions, please let me know. Leave them down in the comments or send me a DM over on Instagram. I will try to help as much as I can. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you on my next video.